thank uh, AstraZeneca for providing the opportunity and platform to speak. And I would thank uh, all my colleagues uh, to join uh, at this point of time in the busy schedule. So, well, in the coming 20-30 uh, minutes, we will understand uh, how, uh, how the treatment for an EGFR mutant lung cancer has evolved over a period of time and where are we standing now. What, are the, what is the clinical evidence we have with each drug which has evolved over a period of time? Uh, what is the magnitude of survival each drug has given? Uh, how relevant it is statistically and clinically? Uh, and what? how can we put into practice? So, so we know that uh, uh, lung cancer is a difficult disease to treat and that majority of them present in an advanced stage and the conversion to mortality is quite high. And that's the reason why uh, uh, this is a difficult to treat disease. It affects vital organs, endangering life. Uh, uh, we always speak of mortality uh, uh, and conversion to mortality as far as lung cancer is concerned. We speak of survival in months and years. And then this is the uh, burden of lung cancer in India. And we can see it is... Uh, uh, it, it is one of the most common cancers uh, in both men and women and has a high mortality rate. Uh, uh, even women are also at par as far as uh, lung cancer is concerned. And the smoker to non-smoker ratio is nearly 20 is to 1, saying that smoking is the risk factor for lung cancer. And you can see 57% of patients with lung cancer are diagnosed with advanced disease leading to a five-year survival of nearly 5%. So, and you can see uh, right from stage 1A to stage 4, and you can see the percentage surviving. However, five-year relative survival for EGFR mutant lung cancer is 15% if you use effective uh, targeted therapies in this particular setting. And uh, if you look into the non-small cell lung cancer, these are the mutations which we usually look into, starting from an EGFR mutation to an ALK, ROS, BRAF, and then we have the PDL1 mutation, uh, a PDL1 status in those who have no driver mutation. And uh, 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 in those patients, we don't even find a PDL1 expression at all. So if you have an EGFR mutation, we have EGFR TKIs. The first, second, and the third generation TKIs we have. We also have Vevacizumab and Ramosirumab, which can be used along with these TKIs. And if you come to ALK, we have individual ALK inhibitors. Again, there we have first, second, and third generation. First being Creso, second generation being, Alec, uh, being Alectinib, Seretinib, and Brigatinib. And third generation, we have Lorlatinib, but that is not in the first line. Then we have ROS1 mutation where both Creso and Cherry are approved. And if you have a BRAF V600E mutation, you have Debrafenib plus Tramatinib being approved. And then if there is PDL1 more than 50%, we can use, we can use Pembrolizumab. And uh, if the PDL1 is less than 50%, uh, we have Pemetrex at Cisplatin. So if the PDL1 is uh, low, we, uh, we have other agents now coming up. We have nevo ep combination, nevo ep short duration of chemo combination. So multiple agents are just coming up uh, in the frontline setting. So you can see uh, the NCCN guidelines, the recent one. You can see Ocimatinib is the preferred PKI of choice in a patient who has an EGFR mutant lung cancer. And these are the three generations of PKI which we speak of. A lot in Jeftinib being the first generation, Afatinib, Decomatinib in the second generation, and Osimatinib being in the third generation. And you can see the differences. Wild type EGFR activity is, is in the first and second generation, whereas uh, uh, activity uh, in, on the wild type is negligible with Osimatinib. And therefore, the side effect profile is better with Osimatinib. And then uh, uh, its activity on other uh, mutations, especially P790M, is significant with OC Martinib, but not with the first and second generation TKIs. And then its activity on uh, uh, other uh, sensitive 
uh, exon 21 and exon 19 are significant with all the three so this is the study of zeftinib where we knew one thing uh, in the initial part uh, what we knew was never smokers especially uh, females they were found to be sensitive it, it it was this particular subgroup of patients and you can see the uh, inclusion criteria of the ipas study uh, they had 1200 odd patients and then uh, 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 they were east asian patients more than 18 years of age and confirmed non small cell lung cancer adenocarcinoma histology non smokers or or light x smokers and then life expectancy should have been more than equal to 12 weeks with an ecog performance rate of 0 to 2 and they should not have used any previous biologic or immunologic therapy and and the randomization was 1 is to 1 to gefitinib 250 mg once a day versus uh paclitaxel plus carboplatin so this was the randomization they had the primary endpoint was pfs and remember it was a non inferiority study and uh, uh secondary endpoint was os os overall response rates qol disease related symptoms and safety and they did have an exploratory analysis based on the egfr mutation egfr copy number and egfr protein expression and this is how if you can uh, look into so uh, the study where we had no biomarkers we selected based only upon the demographic characteristics of non smokers or light smokers so in the overall population ipas should ipas study showed superiority of gefitinib compared with standard chemotherapy in terms of progression free survival the number of patients who remained progression free at 12 months were higher for gefitinib when compared to standard paclitaxel plus carboplatin chemotherapy you can see it is 25% remain progression free at one year versus just 6.7% uh, at one year in the chemotherapy arm so uh, you can see again the criss crossing of these curves as to see with immunotherapy the initial benefit is with chemotherapy but later on the durability and the sustained response is mainly with targeted therapy so if you would have selected the patients based on egfr mutations uh then you couldn't you wouldn't have seen this criss crossing this criss crossing just means that we have not yet picked up a proper biomarker as to which are those patients who are going to benefit and later on uh, those patients who had no biomarker or negative for the biomarker they all uh, progressed and then those who had the biomarker intact continued to benefit this criss crossing just means that uh, we want to pick up the biomarker and we don't have the biomarker and just by morphological characteristics uh, if we can select out this is how the curves we get so these are the curves we are getting in the immunotherapy era today and uh, we say that the response rates are less with immunotherapy the response rates we get later but if you can select out patients with a proper biomarker you do not see these sort of criss crossing uh, uh, in oncology so criss crossing means you need to be alert and search what is an actual biomarker so that you don't expose the initial 40 50 60 percent patients unnecessarily to the drug which doesn't benefit so uh, you can see the hazard ratio 0.74 uh, well within the uh, unity of 0.65 to 0.85 with a p value less than 0.001 so this proved that uh, as far as the progression free survival is concerned gefitinib was superior to paclitaxel plus carboplatin chemotherapy not based on the egfr mutation based on the demographics of never or light smoker and adenocarcinoma histology and the moment you look into uh, uh, the ipas study based on the mutation status uh, in the egfr mutation positive subgroup patient uh, pfs was significantly longer in patients receiving gefitinib and you can see the hazard ratio is becoming much better with 0.48 whereas in the egfr mutation negative subgroup ps was was significantly shorter in the gefitinib arm where you can see the chemo arm doing better than the gefitinib arm and the hazard ratio is more than 2 so this just says that if i am 
using the drug without a biomarker i will be harming these patients than benefiting therefore there is a dire necessity to find out an actual biomarker in these set of patients you can see the criss the criss cross is gone uh, those patients who did not benefit are deleted and you see uh, uh, the hazard ratio is becoming much better in an, when when you have an effective therapy so there was no overall survival benefit because there was cross over whether you give it in the first line or in the subsequent line the patients are going to survive long but you must expose these patients to these tkis at some point of time whether it is first line or second line it doesn't matter but because these are first generation tkis where the efficacy is not that great so when 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 you have a treatment that is moderately effective whether you place in the first line or subsequent line doesn't matter but if you if if you have a very effective therapy then uh, uh, you can even salvage those poor doing patients aggressive patients so the, the the question of sequencing comes when you have a very effective therapy so the significant treatment related difference for pfs and response rates was not obs uh, was observed but there was no overall survival difference the final analysis of os data revealed that there was no difference between the two arms uh, in the egfr mutation subgroup the hazard ratio was 1 whereas in the negative subgroup was 1.18 so the ipas study did not show uh, the presence of overall survival benefit probably due to cross over uh, but did show a progression free survival benefit and better response rates especially in the egfr mutant population and even if you expose the drug based on the demographics of never a light smokers and them also it did benefit so this is one of the beautiful studies where which says how how the criss crossing disappears if i have a biomarker in place and how if i cross over the overall survival benefit diminishes if i do a proper cross over so what matters is exposing the drug rather than the sequence so this is about uh, uh, gefitinib which we learned and then gefitinib even till even today is the standard of care in the first line in majority of centers where there are cost constraints based on the ipas study we have and then we have uh, the afatinib and the lotinib lotinib is another first generation tki and afatinib is second generation tki and you can see Uh, the trials we have for a lot in our optimal study the uptax study and the ensure study and the moment you say of apatinib it's all about lux lung studies so this is the lot in data we have it improved pfs in egfr mutant non small cell lung cancer combined compared to chemotherapy remember all first and second generation tkis including apatinib the comparator arm is always platinum based chemotherapy and not the tki so these improvements in pfs were associated with improvement in quality of life in the optimal and ensure studies however the utax study did not look into the quality of life you can see the pfs nearly reaching one year 10 months to one year as per as pfs is concerned so the optimal study compared with gem carbo whereas the utax study uh, uh, compared with uh, uh, docetaxel or gemcitabine carboplatin and in two study uh, compared with gems is platinum so so this is what the pfs we could achieve with uh, uh, with a lot in it and jeftinib nearly around 8 uh, nearly around 10 to 12 months is what average we could get progression free survival so if i give this oral tkis in egf for mutant population then uh, then then they remain progression free for nearly an year this is that is what we can understand and if you come to afatinib the lux lung studies uh, egfr mutant population so this was head to head comparison with chemotherapy pemetrexate versus platin versus afatinib we can see the pfs is 11.1 versus 6.9 months with an impressive hazard ratio of 0.58 and then if you compare with gemcitabine and cisplatin the hazard ratio is becoming much better of 0.28 this just says that if i have a adenocarcinoma histology gemcitabine does inferior to pemetrexate indirectly so when the we when the comparator arm is weaker your hazard ratio is becoming better so whatever if you combine afatinib with 
if you, if you compare afatinib with uh, a, a platinum based chemotherapy the hazard ratios are better it has an improved progression free survival even the value is approaching nearly one year so if i give afatinib i can have an average estimation that the patient will be on this drug for nearly one year however the overall survival did not differ again in this study just like that with the first generation pkis and when you had head to head comparison of afatinib versus jeftinib you can see the hazard ratio is good but it crosses uh, 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 the median and, and and you can see the difference is very minimal of 10.9 versus 11 months and we are speaking of efs so if you can compare head to head afatinib versus jeftinib in first line uh, the magnitude of difference in progression free survival was not that significant and the p value was 0.017 and this is the drug which is recently come that is dacometinib and this particular study was very well conducted but it had excluded cns metastasis and this was head to head comparison of dacometinib with the first generation jeftinib and remember there were no brain mets included in the study and patients with egfr mutant who have who do not have brain mets will anyways perform better and this is what you can see uh, uh the 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 difference in progression free survival head to head pki tki second generation versus first generation 0.59 hazard ratio with a very good p value of 0.0001 excellent pfs remember brain mets excluded this were good these were patients which had good prognosis and excluded brain metastasis and you can see the subgroup analysis asians did better than non asians and former or current smokers did worse than the never smokers so there was a late separation of pfs curves in this in the study where the initial separation was not there and the subgroup analysis showed that there was a greater benefit in the asian subgroup than in non asian sub and this is what we have we have a significant overall survival difference you can see the hazard ratio of 0.748 but remember uh, uh, this particular study was uh, was not uh, uh, the overall survival was not statistically significant since the formal comparison of overall response rate was not statistically significant based on the study's hierarchical testing rules as per archer 1050 study design the hierarchical testing was pfs response rates and overall survival so if they would have had a significant overall response rate difference then only they could have commented on the overall survival so therefore statistically if you speak the overall survival is not statistically significant even though the numerical significance is that 34 versus 29 months so having said that uh, uh, if you, you, you decometinib does have a significant overall survival difference even though if you look into the statistics it doesn't hold good uh, but uh, the overall survival looks promising head to head comparison of a second generation and a first generation pki giving os difference is quite significant and much more in the asian population with a hazard ratio of 0.5 so coming on to the data what we just spoke of chefitinib erlotinib apatinib and decometinib you can see the overall response rates 71% 83% with erlotinib apatinib 56% and decometinib 75% response rates and the median pf is hovering around one year decometinib crossing one year nearly 14 months pfs in the overall survival uh, nearly around two years uh, with with majority apatinib crossing two years and decometinib reaching up to three years so this is how uh, data we have first and second generation tkis all showed pfs benefit uh, but none of them showed os benefit even though even though we have some data of a fat in a pooled analysis showing some os benefit in the in the exon uh, 19 subset and decometinib in the asian subset however due to statistical insignificance it, it is not considered significant so this is what data we have there is no os benefit statistically with any of the first and second generation tkis and significant treatment related side effects diarrhea being the big problem with these drugs so first and second generation tkis 
the majority of trials had head to head comparison with the platinum based chemotherapy arm in first line it was only afatinib and decomatinib which, which had its comparison with the first generation tki and none of them had overall survival benefit and the separation of curves was in the later part of the bc uh, later part of the trial than in the early part so then comes the third generation tki this is the only third generation tki which is available in the present day and the comparator arm was in the flora was a tki you can see uh, this the inclusion criteria they had uh, more than 18 years performance rate is 0 or 1 they had both exon 19 deletion and exon 21 deletion and no prior systemic therapy at tki and they allowed cns metastasis this is the hallmark uh, thing because you have nearly uh, 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 10 to 20% patients having baseline brain metastasis in egfr mutant lung cancer and as the time goes a greater number of patients develop brain metastasis nearly 60% will develop brain metastasis hence you must have a tki which is efficacious uh, in the brain and the stratification was based on 19 and 21 mutation asian and non asian subset and the dose was 80 mg once a day versus the comparator any first generation tki was allowed jeff or allo and uh, the overall survival was a key secondary end point and resist 1.1 was used uh, for objective uh, response rates and uh, progression free survival analysis was also done cross over was allowed for patients in the comparator egfr tki who could receive open label osimertinib upon central confirmation of progression and t790m positivity so this is the baseline characteristics we have this is in, uh, the the baseline characteristics are well matched we can see both the exon 19 and 21 are well matched adenocarcinoma is nearly 99 to 98% and uh, cns metastasis was in 19 and 23% patients and 65% patients were never smokers asian constituted nearly 60% patients and 38% were non asian so a big number constituted asian subgroup then if you look into the primary analysis which is progression free survival you could see a staggering median progression free survival crossing one and a half years which we never saw with any tki with the decomatinib we had 14 months pfs whereas with osimertinib we are seeing 18.9 months progression free interval and also the comparator had 10 months of progression free survival with an excellent hazard ratio of 0.46 and you can see all the subgroups benefited on osimertinib So this numerically, this is the one that had the highest progression-free survival. So in comparison to this, we have uh, a lot in a plus ramucirumab uh, in the relay, which is also showing a progression-free interval crossing this nearly 20, 21 months of PFS has been seen with the low RAM data, which, which we will be seeing later. So if you look into the CNS uh, subset PFS, you can see the staggering. Uh, cns responses the median pfs was not reached versus 13.9 months in the patients where uh, uh, the C- in case of cns efficacy so cns pfs was statistically significant this just shows how effective this drug is if uh, uh, if you are using in cns metastasis so cns progression on first line osimertinib versus standard tki you can see 19 versus 43 so osimertinib did prevent further cns progression when compared to first generation tkis and this is the overall survival data 38.6 months versus 31.8 months with a significant cross over so 321 deaths were there out of 556 patients in the data cut off and we can see the hazard ratio of 0.799 the p value of 0.04 so there was a statistically significant overall survival benefit even though the cross over was allowed you can see at 3 years 54% versus 44% was the overall survival and the median is crossing 3 years mark which we could not see with dacomatinib 
and uh, uh, even though they excluded CNS metastasis, the OS did not reach to this magnitude, and it benefited almost all subgroups except the Asian subgroups. And uh, the argument we have is the study is not powered to detect the survival in a specific subgroup, and we cannot comment that this drug is not efficacious in the Asian subgroup. So patients remaining on study treatment and time to subsequent therapy at death also was significantly better with osimertinib of nearly 25.5 months versus 13.7 months with the hazard ratio of 0.47. And this is second line TKI uh, at progression. So you can see out of the 180 patients in the comparator EGFR TKI arm who received the first line Sub, uh, who received a first subsequent therapy? Forty-seven percent crossed over to osimertinib. There was a significant crossover, and the overall survival benefit persisted even after the crossover. And this is the safety data. You can hardly see any grade three, four toxicities, no diarrhea, no transaminitis, uh, no rashes, no acne. Only efficacy. There is no side effect as well as. Or see much in this concern. So, Flora was the trial that showed a statistically significant and meaningful overall survival benefit. In the median OS for patients with osimertinib was extended by nearly six and a half months, and osimertinib is the first EGFR TKI monotherapy that showed a statistically significant overall survival benefit. After three years, twenty-eight percent patients in the osimertinib arm. Uh, uh, and nine percent of patients in the comparator arm remained on first line study treatment. Osimertinib presented a favorable and consistent toxicity profile. The final OS analysis of Flora reinforces osimertinib as a standard of care for the first line treatment of patients with EGFR mutant lung cancer. So to conclude, so we had multiple. So we initially had the selection based on the demographic data where. Uh, we found the crisscrossing of curves, and then we had the EGFR mutation biomarker in place, where we had a significant PFS benefit, but no OS benefit because of crossover. A fact, in a did hint some overall survival benefit in the Exxon 19 setting, and then uh, we had the comment in a head-to-head -head comparison with the TKI did show a OS benefit, however, was not statistically powered. But it did, it did work better in the Asian population, uh, and then coming on to osimertinib had a statistically significant overall survival benefit with nearly 50% crossover. However, the Asian subset did not show that OS benefit uh, because the trial was not powered for it. So we have other combinations like we have chemo TKI combination. There are also impressive PFS uh, data are there. Then we have Erlos Erlotinib plus Ramacirumab, which is coming up. That also has shown impressive progression-free survival data, especially in the Exxon 21 setting. So, with this, I would conclude that in the present era, just giving a single-agent first-generation TKI is not sufficient. I would be adding a chemo TKI or a second or a third-generation TKI, and my preference for the first-line treatment would be. Would be a third generation EGFR TKI that is osimertinib, based on the overall survival data which I have, and that is why NCCN has uh, given a preferred choice for osimertinib in first line in EGFR mutant lung cancer. Thank you everyone for their patient listening. Over to you, Dipankar.